Hello and welcome to a quick overview of Power BI. We're starting with the main component, the Power BI desktop. So this is a this is a desktop component that you install on your machine. You can download it uh, from the web. So you have the Power BI desktop that allows you to build your reports. And you can have as many report pages in a report as you like. So you can see here, here we have two reports. And these reports contain visuals. And these visuals can be from a, a list of visualization options that are part of Power BI. But you can also extend this in the marketplace. So for example, you can go here to AppSource, which is the Microsoft marketplace, and then see all the available visualization options that are uh, there in addition to what comes from Power BI out of the box. So for example, if I search here for Ectaris, you can see now the visualization options that we have developed typically around planning and write back. So for uh, writing back comments in Power BI, visual planning, uh, and a few other visualization options. But in addition to that, many, many others where you can also see them by category for advanced analytics, for filter components where you can filter your data, infographics, and so on. So you can extend all these uh, in, in a large marketplace or even build them yourself if you want to. So with the visuals, the visuals um, are, as we just discussed, one of these visualization options. So this is in, in this case a map. And with the visual, you can then set up the data that you want to see. So you have three components here, the fields, which are the data fields that you want to use in your visuals. You have formatting, which allows you to specify options for the particular visual and that varies. So this varies on the particular visual that you're using. So for example, with the map, we have now map styles here where I can have a road map or I can have a dark map. And if you change these things, you can see they're automatically, they're automatically changing. So these formatting options typically depend. And then you have a, a final areas for analytics, which gives you additional analytics options. Um, for example, for trend lines. And, and again, this depends on what visual you're using. Um, the option to further customize the visual to your needs. So these are important. So the, the data field, which allows you to use the data. And in the data fields, you can use the data that you have used in Power BI. So uh, here we have added, and that will be part of the first lab. So we have added some data. Um, in this case, it's uh, text data and Excel data. And I can then see if I, so these are different um, data sets in Power BI. So we have here sales and they contain fields. And so we can see here, we have the data by country, we have zip codes, we have the number of units sold. So if you want to see this data, you can switch here to the data, um, to the data area on the, on the left side. So this area is for the report, the, the top one. And this area will show you some details of your data. And if you go to the particular data set, the sales, you can see now the structure of the data set. And that data set, is always in columns and these columns are attributes of your data set. So for example, here we have the product ID, the date of the transaction, the zip code, the number of units sold, the revenue, where was it sold to and the zip code. And like this, you can see the structure of your data sources um, always by just selecting the data set on the right side. So here we can see now data that is product related, manufacturer data, geography, and then a date table. And with these data fields, you can then build your report. So for example, here in this case, let's start this from scratch. So let's rebuild this map visual from scratch. So I can take now the visualization. Now I have an empty visualization, but I can see here now the fields that this visual can use. And again, this depends on the visual. Some are simpler. Um, some are more complex. So in this case, let's say we want to see the data by country, so the location. 
and I want to see the sales units. So the size of the bubble in this visual is driven by the sales number. So I can see we have a lot of sales in North America, um, not so much in Japan. So when you move the mouse pointer to a particular point, it, it typically gives you details for this particular data point. So in our case here, we have the name of the country and the sales, but this is something that you can also configure in Power BI. So you can say, hey, I want additional information here. For example, what I could do here now is I say, I want to show in the tooltip, I want to show the number of units. So if I go now to the, um, to the particular data point, in this case, a bubble, I can see now the sales data and the units sold for every data point that I have here. So this just is a, is a quick introduction of how Power BI works when you create reports. So you use a visual, you configure the visual with the fields that you have in your data. You have then also the option to switch this. So let's say you, want, you don't want to display this as a map anymore, but you want to switch this to a bar chart. You can then switch this very easily by clicking on another visualization to a bar chart. So this is the way um, the report creation works. And the, the last thing that I now want to show you um, in Power BI Desktop is the way how you work with your data. So Power BI gives you the option to add nearly any kind of data. So if you, if you go to add data, you see now hundreds of options, hundreds of data sources uh, that you can access and link into Power BI. This goes from file sources like Excel files, text files, JSON, and so on, to databases where you can access a wide variety of databases. Uh, the Power Platforms or other Power BI um, platform components, Azure, wide variety of Azure data sources, the Microsoft Cloud Service. Online services, again, a wide variety of online services from Google, Salesforce, uh, SharePoint and so on. So you can just select them and then other ones. And here again, you can create your own um, connectors. So let's say you have a source where there's no connector available at the moment, um, you can add them. So for example, we also provide our own connector where you can access to data that's handled in Actaris. Once you have added a data, data source, you typically work in Power Query. So Power Query, is the Power BI component that allows you now to manage your data sources, to manage and transform your data sources so that um, they cover particular analytics requirements to clean up your data, but also to make it work with other data sources. So to bring it into the same granularity into a similar format that you can compare it. So, uh, this used to be called extraction, transformation, and loading, so the transformation part of things. So where you transform data uh, into a particular way that you need. And let's go just through one of these. So here, for example, we've added now, when you add a source from Power BI using get data, it will show up here. So for example, here, a uh, product table. And our product table, is um, an Excel spreadsheet, and it's the, the product sheet of the Excel workbook. And I've selected here now, the first step was to select the workbook that I want to use. So the way Power Query works is, is in steps. So you add steps to transform and work with your data. So the first step here was to, to choose the Power BI, sorry, the Excel sheet that you want to work with. So this was the, um, the product sheet. So you can see here, uh, when you initially do this step, it will show you this is my Excel file, BI dimensions XLX. This has four sheets, and I want to use the, the data from this table, from the products table. And then in a similar fashion, you can then add transformation steps using the options that you have in Power Query. So transformation steps, general steps, for example, you can delete columns. If you don't want a particular column, you could um, delete it. So I'm not just to show it. Deleting these columns, so let's say you don't need this column uh, for your analytics, you can remove it. And this has added now a new step and it's not anymore in the data set. Uh, if you don't 
if you want to delete this step, you can just click on the left side and this will delete this particular transformation steps. So what we have done here, and this is what we'll do very soon in the lab, we've added a variety of transformation steps. So we've uh, added text before the limiter. So you can see the, the transformation here. So this was the, uh, we've split up this column here and said, hey, I want to just use the, I want to split up here. We have the product name as a combination of product name and uh, product category, but I want to analyze by product category and category separately. So in this step, we are separating this column into two, into two fields that I can then use in my data set. And like this, um, we have in this example, different transformation steps that clean the data. So a typical thing is to remove errors, remove duplicates, remove empty ones. So all these things you can do in Power Query. And Power Query is not just limited to Excel. Power Query also works in nearly exactly the way. There's a few minor changes in Excel. So uh, if you have already worked in Excel, if you prefer to work in Excel, um, you don't need to learn something new. Uh, you can use Power Query in the same way to clean up your data, to transform your data as in, in Power BI. So once you have done, added your sources, done your transformation, you have then the output here. That's what we've just worked with before. And you can build your reports as you've seen before using visuals and just general formatting options where you put in, for example, a header, a text field, uh, a picture. Uh, you use very often filters that allow you to filter the data in your in your reports. If, you, if I want to see now the uh, next point, it doesn't make a lot of sense here, but let's say I want to see the last uh, three years of data, I can just put in here my number and I'll see the last three years. If I want to see the last three months, I can just select that and this will not give you give me very much because that is empty. We don't have any data in the last three months, so that doesn't help me. But let's say if we go to 24 months, we see now here we get the data back. So this is um, the way Power BI, how you build Power BI reports. You have your data, you have your visuals, you have your formatting, and then you work on the analysis. And the analysis we, we saw already a little bit is when you move the mouse pointer to a data point, it will tell you some more details. And this works uh, for all the data points, and this can also vary. So you can have your own tool tips, even with additional um, visualization options, not just the text um, with the particular data detail. Um, the other important thing is in Power BI, the data points interact by default. You can turn this off if you want to, but by default they interact. So let's suppose you want to have a look at what's going on in, in the US. You can just click on this data point. And as you have seen, all the other visuals have automatically adapted. So to show now the data for the US, and this can either be in the context of the overall situation. So I can immediately see uh, the US is a large proportion of the overall situation, or you can filter it. So if you, so you have the option here to specify the interaction type. So let's just turn this on and change it. So let's go to interactions. So at the moment, the interaction is set to highlight. I don't want to highlight the data. I want to filter it. So if you click on North America now, you will see only the North America data. If I click on Africa, I will only see the Africa data. So this is a way to define the interactions between different visuals. So you can either filter them, where when you click on something, you will only get the results of the particular situation, or you can highlight. When you click on something, you will get what's the share of the selected element compared to the total. So this is a key principle in Power BI that's, that's good to know. Um, you have then special features in 
in the visual, for example, here animations where you can see changes over time. In this case, not too interesting because I have limited my data a little bit. Let's make this a bit bigger and switch to seven years. Then this whole thing will be a little bit more interesting. And I see now the development over time, which can be a, a very helpful insight um, to see how your data has evolved over time if, if you are working on, on data analytics projects that use that uses um, a time axis. And this is just a standard feature of the scatter plot visual um, directly um, in, in Power BI. So this was a little bit about data integration, report creation. I want to now switch to the publishing of reports. So once you have finished your report setup, you can either share the, the Power BI file. The Power BI file is a, is, a, is a file format called PBIX. And this PBIX format contains all the definition of the report, of the data sets that are used, and potentially also the data themselves, data points themselves. So you have in, in Power BI two ways of working. You can import your data, which means it becomes a part of the Power BI file of the PBIX file, uh, which has the advantage that uh, you can do analysis very fast and you can easily share it. So um, if you want to share this PBIX file with your colleague, uh, you can just send it to them or make it available in the cloud. They can open it. They need to have Power BI desktop installed, but that's the only thing. They can open it and then do the same analysis. Obviously, this is also a little bit uh, potentially of a problem because if the data is in Power BI, this means the person that has the PBX file has the data. So you have to be careful here. If this is sensitive data, then this is potentially not the right way of doing things where you load everything in the Power BI X file. You have to be aware that if the data is in import mode in the PBX file, then the person who has the PBX file has the data. So um, careful here. If you want to avoid this, uh, you can use um, an approach called direct query, which as opposed to loading the data in Power BI has a live connection to the data. So when you do your query, for example, you switch to a different time period or um, you know you want to see data by different manufacturers, uh, you can um, it will uh, send the query to the database in real time. So if I click here on Pyram to get the data for Pyram, it will kick off the the query to the whatever the data source was and show me the data for for Pyram, but not, none of the Pyram data will be stored in the PBX file. It's a query that's going against the data set. So these are the two um, ways of working with data in Power BI. You specify this when you're choosing your data source. So for example, if you choose a SQL Server data source, you see the option that you can use import mode, importing the data into Power BI. So you will import the data from this table into Power BI or direct query, which means you have the life link to the database and you will only read what you're allowed to see. So this will require that you authenticate against the database. And it will give you the current um, situation in the database. So here you have more control because you can decide you know, what parts and at what particular point in time uh, do I want the data to be in. Here, it will give the user the current state of the database. So if the database is not ready, if it's incomplete, then obviously you have to take this into account and potentially um, make uh, arrangements here. For example, filter the data on, on a time period where you know it's complete because it will go against the database and it will show what's in the database. So these are the two options. So once you have your report, then the other option in addition to sharing the PBX file, is to publish it uh, to the web. And this is just one, one click here. I can publish it um, to the Power BI service. So this is now the Power BI report that we saw before in the desktop. This was the desktop. I published it. This is now the report um, on the web with exactly the same functionality. So if I click on something here, this will automatically show me the share. Uh, if I move the mouse pointer, you know, I see the tool tips. If I change the filter here, we'll get the, the data for this particular period. I can jump between the different 
a report pages and I will also see the new report that I've created before. So when should we use Power BI Desktop versus the Power BI service? As I mentioned before, so with, with Power BI Desktop, you have more options, use reports and added data sources. Some options, in, for example, for getting data require Power BI Desktop. So there's only a few data sources that you can access so where you can build a new report directly in Power BI. So um, I'll, I'll show it to you in a second when we when we look at what data sources can we access. Then with the editing, um, you can edit the Power BI report if you have the rights, obviously, to do that. So as a Power BI report publisher, you can specify are your users allowed to change the report or not. With the uh, editing options, uh, you have a lot of options available to you. For example, I could um, do the same what I've done before with the formatting of this visual. I can do it directly here in, in, in the Power BI web service as well. But there are some options that are not available. And, and the most important one is the calculations, which we haven't covered so far. Power BI allows you to define your own calculation logic, which is called DAX. Um, the other option is uh, calculated columns, which is a column that's calculated. Uh, we will cover this a little bit in the labs today, but this is a quite extensive topic, which probably requires its own training. But this is something that you can't use, so you can't edit calculations on the web. So if I switch back to um, the Power BI desktop, here yeah, these are the calculations. For example, I've got a calculation here for sales, which is a very simple thing. It just takes the, the sum of the revenues. But this is something that you can only edit in the Power BI desktop. There's no option to to edit this on the web. So for this, you will need the Power BI desktop. So if you want to edit this and say, hey, I want to, this is a simple way of increasing your revenues, multiply them by 10. Um, you can only do this uh, in the Power BI desktop. Uh, in a nutshell, uh, it's a good idea to start with Power BI desktop because that gives you everything. Um, so it gives you the option to you know, access any of the data sources. It gives you all the options for data transformation. You have some now using data flows in the web service, but that again is a bit of a different story. The, you have way more options if you use uh, Power Query. So if you use Power Query or what's now called transform data in, in Power BI Desktop. Um, the final thing is the data sources, and let's have a quick look at this. So if I go to my workspace, let's go to the full workspace here, I can now create reports directly from here. But as you can see, you can only create it with existing data sources. There is some options where you can create a new data set, but they are limited. So you can use apps that are already published by someone to the web service um, in, in Power BI, in the Power BI service. There's a few apps that you can access uh, these are typically apps for particular requirements. And, and for example, we offer um, one with a Keras. Uh, so we offer what I mentioned before, we have these out of the box applications that um, combine the, the data model. So it gives you automatically a data model for a particular data source, for example, zero. So it automatically creates a, an optimal data model for zero. It, and it gives you all the reports out of the box as well. So we give you a set of reports, the calculation logic, that's another important thing as well, out of the box, and, and you don't need to have Power BI Desktop installed. Uh, but these are, again, limited to apps that are already in place, and in many cases, your source is likely not there yet. You have options for files. So files are accessible, so you can use local files, files in OneDrive, SharePoint. Uh, but as you can see, it's very limited in comparison to uh, what you have when you're working in the Power BI desktop, where you have you know, way more options um, and data sources that you can work with. So you can see you now all these data sources you have in, in Power BI desktop compared to just a few here. And then finally, a few database options are available, but that's limited to Azure SQL, so you can't use on-prem databases 
just on the so if you want to start without the Power BI test to be obviously can start with SQL service SQL server data from Power BI desktop. But if you don't want to use the desktop, you can only use Azure SQL, Azure SQL Data Warehouse, Analysis Services, and Spark. So the data sources um, are much more limited than what you have in, in Power BI desktop. Thank you very much for watching this introduction to Power BI. For any further questions, please contact us on these details.